In today's video, you're going to see the heartbreaking status of animals being kept in many zoos around the world. Sort of like these big cats in a zoo in Canada, and the plight of these elephants and other animals in the zoo over in Thailand. First though, let's see how one of the best zoos in the world became a haven for animal abuse. Just a heads up, this video might be hard to watch for some people, so you've all been warned. The Giza Zoo, Egypt The Giza Zoo in Cairo, Egypt was once among the world's best zoos, but the decades have not been kind to the place and it faced a number of controversies. This actually led it to being expelled from the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums in 2004, and by that time this historical zoo was known for cruel animal abuse, litter, and poor management. More akin to a prison rather than a zoo, most of the animals are kept in small cramped cages. The lions, in particular, are only allowed to roam in larger spaces for two hours a day before they're forced back into their cages. In one horrific incident, a former zookeeper said that the zoo visitors pelted the caged lions as a zookeeper happily looked on. It's also not just the larger animals that have been confined to cages too small for them. In another part of the zoo, this fox can be seen pacing up and down its cage that is clearly too small for an animal as active and agile as it is. There's been quite a number of incidents of animal cruelty in the zoo's long history, as we've talked about before. In 2004, for instance, two gorillas in the zoo were suspected to be infected with the Ebola virus. The two were immediately killed by the zookeepers without testing the animals whether they were infected or not. In 2006, though, more than 500 birds were inhumanely slaughtered in a move that zoo officials said was to prevent the outbreak of bird flu. And guess what? It doesn't end there. Allegedly, over in 2008, two men broke into the zoo and killed two camels. And in his latest 2013, three black bears were killed in what zoo officials called a bear riot. Whatever that is. Oh, and also a three-year-old giraffe apparently killed itself due to mental issues. The state of the zoo was also one of perpetual unkemptness, full of broken benches and seats, street vendors who hassle tourists, especially foreigners, and of course the garbage that seems to be everywhere in the grounds, including the animal cages and enclosures. Heck, the large monkey pit, which is arguably one of the zoo's most visited attractions, is lined up with used wrappers, cans, and even diapers. Then there are the zookeepers who force visitors to pose for a photo with the animals for a few bucks, smoking and eating while on the job, and look generally unqualified for what their job entails. I suppose in fairness though, the place does seem to be trying to repair its tainted reputation. A visit to the zoo in recent years shows a better treatment to the animals, and the place does seem to be well maintained overall. Let's just hope that zoo officials maintain this complete 180 for the sake of all the animals still living at the zoo, and not just for profit. The Mumbai Zoo, India Conditions at the Mumbai Zoo were so bad that animals would die before they even reached their displays. In one case in 2016, a humble penguin died just three months after it was acquired by the zoo, and it was supposed to be put on display a month later. Because of this incident, animal rights activists filed a criminal complaint against the zoo and demanded authorities to inspect zoo conditions. And this inspection revealed a lot of the animals kept at the zoo, not only the penguins, were kept in cruel and inhumane conditions. There were many problems with Mumbai Zoo. It was laid out in 1861 as a botanical garden, and small animal enclosures in the style of 19th century zoos were added from 1873 onwards. But the zoo continued to receive botanical specimens from all over the tropical world, becoming a repository of exotic plant species. Despite its 53-acre area, though, the zoo has become quite crowded at this point. The thing is, the zoo kept on expanding on its animal exhibits despite many, many protests. Those of you who love animals should never step inside this zoo's premises, as what you're going to see is going to be traumatic. For instance, one visitor said that the first thing he saw when he visited the place was a large group of people that were crowding around the leopard enclosure. They were throwing pebbles at the animal, who was clearly scared stiff, trying to get it to move. Another group of men were screaming into the lion's cage to get the resting cats to move around for their viewing pleasure. Children were tossing stones at the hippos, and one man was banging at the glass walls of the tiny enclosure which held snakes. Now, the zoo did say that they intended to find visitors who would harm the animals, but it still just keeps happening, and the zoo just seems to give too little punishments. And the thing is, there's no guards that were in sight while the abuses were happening. Mumbai's zoo problem isn't only mismanagement and poor conditions. The visitors suck as well. They're definitely the biggest contributors to the animal abuse here, to the point where there's actually no more big cats and the reptiles are gone, having died of old age or more likely from the cruel conditions and treatment they had to endure every single day. 
Like with the other zoo, they are trying some other things. But the thing is, you can really only contain your visitors so much. So if you're one of the visitors of Mumbai Zoo, get a life. Natural Bridge Zoo, Virginia. This Virginia roadside zoo probably has more Federal Animal Welfare Act sanctions than any other U.S. zoos included in this video. The zoo was actually sighted over 150 different times, which makes me wonder why this place is still in operation. These citations are for many reports of animal cruelty, most of them centered on the zoo's treatment of an elephant named Asha. According to reports, Asha was being forced to give rides to paying visitors, oftentimes while not being supervised by her handler. This is just one of the other cruel things the elephant has been subjected to. The zoo was also cited back in 2015 when reports surfaced that Asha wasn't receiving adequate veterinary care. When the elephant was examined, she had overgrown foot pads, broken toenails, and dry, thickened skin. PETA have alerted the USDA many times about how Asha is being treated at the zoo, which had been there for decades now when she was brought there as a baby. According to PETA, the elephant, when not being forced to give visitors a ride in the sweltering summer heat, had been kept chained to a barn with a damp concrete floor, being kept there even through the harsh winters. Ever since arriving at the zoo, Hosh had been unable to socialize or communicate with others of her kind. Given that we know how intelligent and social elephants are, Ash's predicament is really heartbreaking. Asha sadly isn't the only casualty though, as there are other horrendous acts claimed. Aside from failing to provide animals with adequate veterinary care, they were also found to be guilty of not providing adequate food and water to all animals under their care. And possibly the most disturbing of them all is the bludgeoning of animals as a form of euthanasia. The USDA has fined Natural Bridge Zoo a total of $41,500 US dollars for its various citations. Animal rights groups like PETA will probably not stop until this zoo and others like it are permanently closed. Normally I don't agree with PETA, but this time I will. Bowmanville Zoo, Canada. Billing itself as the oldest zoo in North America couldn't keep the Bowmanville Zoo in Ontario, Canada operational. Due to an immediate drop in attendance, the zoo finally closed its doors on Thanksgiving 2016. All the animals in the zoo were relocated, which is probably for the better because of the controversy surrounding the place and the zoo's director, Michael Hackenberger. Just a few months prior to the zoo's closure, the animal rights group PETA released a video showing Hackenberger cruelly and repeatedly whipping a young tiger named Uno. This kept going until the poor tiger literally defecated itself out of fear. Hackenberger, the class act that he was, would then boast about the whipping incident, claiming that he carved his initials on the sides of the animals. If reports are to be believed, this whipping of a tiger was not an isolated incident. Hackenberger, who also supplies animals for film, TV, and commercials, has also been accused of many instances of animal abuse aside from Uno. One particularly nasty incident in 2015, he was filmed verbally abusing a baboon on live TV. A tiger named Jonas, one that was used in filming the movie The Life of Pi, died during surgery under his watch from an undiagnosed birth defect which shouldn't have been life-threatening. Oh, and uh, by the way, that same tiger was actually kidnapped by Hackenberger from a parking lot where its trainer had parked it for the night. Treatment of big cats at the zoo was really, really bad and it showed. One of his lions, named Leo, was so stressed that when he was used in a photo shoot in 2008, he attacked the martial artist who was with him during the shoot. Sadly, that wasn't the last lion attack, as then-zoo employee Dave Salmoni in 1999 was attacked by Bongo, another lion. Elephants were also badly mistreated. One named Limbo was badly beaten as punishment for lashing out on a circus trainer in 2002. And one named Angus was forced by Hackenberger to perform on circuses before he died in 2006 by overdosing on sedatives. Apparently, the animal was sedated ahead of a flight to Africa for a film project, and they just didn't care how many sedatives they shoved down its gullet. When the stories of cruel animal abuse came out, Hackenberger promptly resigned from his position as zoo director. And although he denied all charges against him, he was still charged with multiple counts of animal cruelty. While I'm not sure if he has been properly sentenced as of yet, I do know that back in 2017 he suffered a stroke that left him incapacitated and unable to attend his court hearings. Other than that, I'm not really sure. The zoo then closed down shortly thereafter, with attendances dwindling a mere days after the tiger beating video was published. Kiev Zoo, Ukraine Ukraine isn't a fun place for people nowadays, much more for animals. The constant fighting and loud noises from gunfire and bombs have made life simply unbearable for animals in Ukraine's Kiev Zoo. 
Not only are the animals here not being fed because of the war, the noise is also not good for them and their mental health. According to a study published in 2019, animals react to loud noises with stress and agitation and will move towards quieter parts of their enclosures, a physical impossibility today. Now, this study was only done with construction work, with the scale of war and associated explosions being even louder though, we can only assume how terrified these poor animals are. The most logical solution to this problem is moving the animals, which is easier said than done. While some of the smaller animals have been relocated to zoos in neighboring countries like Poland, transporting a number of large animals such as giraffes, elephants, and rhinos present a far more challenging task. Even in normal circumstances, moving zoo animals is not an easy task. Animal transportation can have negative effects on the animal's welfare, and animals undergoing transportation can experience dehydration, fatigue, behavioral changes, and stress. Research has also shown that animals form relationships with the keepers, and this might have additional welfare implication if animals are moved under stressful conditions to new locations. At the moment, animals are being sedated and moved to underground spaces so they could at least fare much better. Their handlers are also trying to stay with their charges overnight, risking their lives in the process. Granted, though, this really hasn't been the best zoo. In 2007, the zoo was expelled from the European Association of Zoos and Aquaria and has been accused of a multitude of violations. According to reports at the time, the zoo was treating its animals so badly that it was more like a concentration camp rather than a zoo. In one particularly heartbreaking example, an elephant named Boy suffered from malnutrition. He was basically fed a diet of just hay and water and lost so much weight that his ribs were sticking out. The elephant was then placed back on a diet of apples, beets, and carrots, which then caused rapid weight gain, which then led to a heart failure. Boys was just one of the sad cases to come out of the zoo at the time. In fact, about 250 animals died in two years in the Kiev Zoo from malnutrition, lack of medical care, and improper treatment. You could say it's a lot better right now. Well, not right now, right now, but you know what I mean. And now it's time for the day's best pick. This zoo is so bad, it's been dubbed by the media as the number one worst zoo for elephants in the entire world. The Oklahoma City Zoo The Oklahoma City Zoo appears on this list because of one thing in particular. Its elephant program that many animal rights groups have said is outright cruel to the animals. Case in point is what happened to Chai, an Asian elephant that died in the zoo just eight months after being transferred from Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle. She was found dead and alone in the outside exhibit at Oklahoma City Zoo in the early morning of a very cold January day in 2016. She was only 37 years old. Chai had a hard life even before being transferred to the Oklahoma City Zoo. She had undergone 112 instances of artificial insemination, and prior to being transferred, lost her baby. This was due to the elephant disease endotheolotropic herpes virus, or EEVH. Also, after coming to Oklahoma, she lost around 100 pounds. She also had a bacterial infection in her bloodstream, likely caused by 25 clearly visible pus-filled abscesses that went untreated, among her other chronic health problems. Yet the Oklahoma Zoo had the audacity to say that there were no red flags before her death. She actually came to Oklahoma with another female elephant named Bamboo, and she isn't faring much better. She's being repeatedly attacked by at least one other female Asian elephant. In March of 2016, about two inches of her tail was bitten off in the third attack, and since her arrival, she's also suffered skin abrasions and fissures, a six-inch gash on her trunk, and swelling above one eye. Caught between bullying and crushing loneliness, Bamboo has no way to escape these attacks and is responding aggressively, and ultimately defensively, with other elephants and staff. She's now often kept in isolation from the other elephants to avoid further attacks, with the zoo simply switching one form of her suffering for the other. To further aggravate things, the Oklahoma City Zoo failed to heed the fact that both Chai and Bamboo were exposed to the EEVH virus, which infected and caused the death of an elephant calf named Mei Li, and despite the dangers posed by the virus, Bamboo was still included in the zoo's elephant breeding program, which partially ensures the spread of the virus throughout the zoo's elephant population. The sad thing is, all this death and hardship could have been provided if both Chai and Bamboo were only sent to live the rest of their lives in an elephant sanctuary, or at the very least, treated properly. Surabaya Zoo, Indonesia For it to earn the nickname of the Zoo of Death, conditions gotta be pretty hard for the animals at Indonesia's zoo. Ask any person who's visited the place, and they'll tell you the deplorable situation the animals here face daily. 
This is one massive zoo that's been in business since 1916 and is home to between 2,800 and 4,000 animals. Peter reports that animals at the Surabaya Zoo are forced to live in dirty, litter-ridden, bear-cramped cages, all while suffering from malnutrition, neglect, and other kinds of mistreatment. In fact, a former Surabaya Zoo manager who Peter spoke with estimated that 50 animals died at the zoo over a three-month period. One notable death is that of a giraffe that died because it was eating plastic and litter that was lying around inside its enclosure. When an autopsy was conducted, a 40-pound ball of plastic as big as a beach ball was found in its stomach. There's also the sad story of Razek, an underfed tiger who very rarely ever got fed, and when she did, the meat given to her was laced with formaldehyde. She starved to death after the embalming fluid rotted away her digestive tract. Worse still, there's also evidence that zoo officials have been selling the organs of dead tigers illegally, most likely to the lucrative indigenous Asian medicine trade. Also, adequate veterinary care is rarely provided to the animals, if at all, as evidenced by this poor bear stuck in his small cage, suffering from what looks like infected wounds on its legs. Aside from these, animals live in cages which are obviously too small for them, lie on cold, hard, and often damp concrete floors, just awaiting death from sickness, starvation, or both. A petition was started in 2021 to permanently close down the Zoo of Death, but at the time of writing, the zoo is still operational. Petitions can only go so far. Dhaka Zoo, Bangladesh The National Zoo in Dhaka, Bangladesh is slowly rebuilding its reputation, to be fair. It's one of the bigger zoos in today's list, and that size actually gives it the potential for being one of the best, if not the best, zoo in the world. But they still got a long way to go, especially after what happened in 2009, leading animal rights activists to call the place a death camp rather than a zoo. Over 20 animal deaths occurred in the zoo alone in 2009. One of the more notable cases is the death of a lion named Ringo. The lion was found dead in his cage one morning, but had been suffering from various illnesses for a year prior to his death. In fact, he was already paralyzed and couldn't move properly. Ringo's death brought down the zoo's lion population from 18 to 17, which probably was a good thing given the fact that all of those lions had to share only eight small cages. A post-mortem was conducted on the lion, and it should be noted that there wasn't any evidence of abuse found. It should also be noted that it was unclear whether authorities actually conducted the post-mortem to find evidence of abuse. Whether there was abuse on the lion or not, the fact remains that multiple animals died within a span of just months during that year. Three days before the lion's demise, a young giraffe died, and this one showed signs of poor health, which reflects just how poor the zoo's animal health management is. Then, a few months later, a somber deer, a baboon, a wildebeest, and the zoo's last Malayan tapir died in a span of a month. And just a few months before that, a critically endangered royal Bengal tiger, two freshwater crocs, a zebra, and an adjutant stork died all in the same month. It was also found that on the day the lion died, a rhino, a tiger, a horse, a somber deer, and a kudu were also sick. Now, physical health isn't the only problems the animals that call the zoo home have. Because of poor health management, animals are losing mates, affecting their tempers. This is particularly evident on a lioness that lost her mate due to illness. Once active, she gradually exhibited signs of being withdrawn, preferring to keep to herself rather than joining in with the pride. Nowadays, life is pretty much better for all animals in the zoo. There are still a few issues, but none of them compared to the string of deaths in 2009, which is clearly the zoo's darkest year. The Gaza Zoo Devastated by war, Gaza is probably the least likely place to find a zoo. But Gaza does have a zoo, and quite predictably, the animals there aren't faring well. Opened in 2007 on three and a half acres next to an amusement park, the Khan Yunus Zoo has long been called the world's worst zoo by animal welfare groups such as Four Paws and various international media outlets. Animals there were reported to have starved to death during military conflicts between Gaza's Hamas-led government and neighboring Israel. Ten years ago, the constant fighting actually devastated the zoo's animal population, so much so that zookeepers had to resort to taxidermy to preserve the animal that dies and display them instead. In fact, more than 50 dead animals were taxidermied by the staff during that time. The number of death was staggering, and the surviving animals were forced to share their cramped cages along with the dead. The zoo was closed, forced by a seven-week conflict back in 2014. As for the animals that still remain at the zoo, a decision was made to move them to other zoos, a massive and difficult undertaking at the time, despite the fact that there were only 15 animals left at the zoo. 
There was a solitary Bengal tiger, five monkeys, an emu, a pelican, two buzzards, two porcupines, two tortoises, and a doe, all of which had to be transferred. Thankfully though, the rescue mission was a complete success. However, animal rights activists were furious when they found out that the zoo was reopened in 2019, with the main attractions being lions that were smuggled via tunnels from Egypt. Four Paws have since sent a letter to the Ministry of Agriculture in Gaza, asking it to confiscate the animals from the newly reopened zoo. And as expected, these lions are being kept in conditions that are inappropriate for their species. They may be unhealthy, and also look like they're in urgent need of medical help and food. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. He does leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Summit Prakarn Crocodile Farm and Zoo Many animal rights activists believe that Thailand's Samut Prakang Crocodile Farm and Zoo is one of the worst places for animals in the entire world, and it has a pretty good reason for that. The cruelty and abuse here are not just allegations. PETA's actually released a video showing the poor conditions the animals are kept in, and the abhorrent treatment that they're receiving every single day. Most of the animals are being kept in cages far too small for them, while those who aren't in cages are kept on really short chains. In 2019, a PETA video expose of the Sumat Prakan Zoo showed that elephants of the facility are stabbed in order to make them perform tricks. Crocodiles are struck with bamboo poles and tigers are harassed for performances and photos. Further investigations found that other animals, including a young orangutan and a chimpanzee, appeared frustrated and listless. Then in early 2020, the zoo forced a masked to leash chimpanzee to ride around on a bike and spray disinfectant in an apparent attempt to capitalize on the coronavirus crisis. It's the elephants, though, who get the worst treatment here. Not only are they stabbed and forced to do tricks, they're paraded around the zoo multiple times a day. After this, they're gonna be forced to do tricks and even play soccer. And when all that is finished, they're kept in enclosures with cold, concrete floors attached to extremely short chains, giving them no freedom to move around. Quite disturbingly, you can see most of these elephants bobbing their heads up and down or left and right, which animal experts say is a sign of mental distress and degradation. Many have called for the closing of the zoo. Some large travel agencies have even stopped including the zoo in their travel packages. But despite that and the overwhelming evidence of animal cruelty, the zoo remains operational as of this writing. It's a dark day when I completely agree with PETA, and today's that day. See you all next time.